hello and welcome to Whose Line Is It Anyway? And if you haven't seen, seen the show before, <laughs> then, uh, then you're seeing it for the first time now. Now, in this programme, the performers have to make up things as they go along without preparation or rehearsal, which, let's face it, hasn't been seen on television since, what, uh, Crossroads went off the air. <laughs> now, in the show tonight, we have Tony Slattery, who was apparently a great success with the viewers last time he was with us. You can stop writing the letters now, Mrs Slattery. <laughs> Also returning for a second visit is top-line actor Jonathan Price, tonight taking time off from Chekhov. And next, well, it's always a pleasure to welcome a close personal friend to the programme. But until one comes along, here's, <laughs> here's Rory McGrath of Who Dares Wins, Chelmsford 1, 2, 3, and maybe one or two other shows that used to be on the television. And finally, the incomparable John Sessions, who, let's face it, has more talent in his little finger than the rest of his body put together. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the contestants. All right. Now, this first game is called Authors, and there's a little bit of preparation involved in this, in the sense that each of them has come along with a famous author in mind, ready to tell a story using the style of that famous author. So if you'd like to come forward, ready to do the uh, storytelling. Uh, Tony, you have to start off, I'm afraid. Now, who is your author? Uh, yes, my author is the, the black magic author, Dennis Wheatley. Dennis Wheatley, who writes about those chocolates, yes. And uh, <laughs> Jonathan Price. Egon Roney. Egon Roney, also. <laughs> Also writes about chocolates uh, sometimes. Uh, Rory. Uh, my author is the very famous Jorge Luis Borges. Oh, very famous. Sort of Spanish writer, isn't he? Argentinian. Argentinian, yes. Yes, he... yes the famous, the world famous yes. writer of metaphysical short stories. Yes, he's sort of like the Argentinian Geoffrey Archer, isn't he? And, um... Yes, and he didn't offer money to women at railway stations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he may have done, and then he's yeah. dead now. And neither did Geoffrey Archer, as far as... <laughs> as far as anybody knows. And uh, John Sessions. Um, Robert Louis Stevenson. Robert Louis Stevenson, right. Firm around there. Now, we need a title for this story for them to tell. So, anyone got a good title for a story? Harry Scott Broker um, and the Day of the Big Bang. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That sounded good to me. Uh, I think it was something like Stanley the Stockbroker and the Day of the Big Bang. Yes, a very good title. Well done. Thank you for coming. Um, <laughs> You can go now if you want, I don't mind. Uh, so, Tony, can you start off? I'll buzz on to the next author when you've done enough. As the Big Bang ceremony commenced, Stanley stood before the silver pentangle, his breasts dangling. <laughs> the white-clad figure of the Countess de Baudricourt found herself suddenly sucked into a satanic vortex of child sacrifice, depravity and goat droppings. <laughs> The goat droppings were served up in a rather tasteful, <laughs> tasteful, tasteful mousseline de framboise, as I remember. Uh, the whole was uh, in a wonderful setting, an Edwardian uh, vicarage, um, placed rather sort of ostentatiously within the city. Um, On hearing this, Suarez turned to Dalman and said, Diles que no me mata el hombre, por caridad de Dios. Diles que lo viejo que soy, que no valgo nada, hombre. Diles, 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 usted no. Diles, por caridad de Dios. <laughs> it was with a certain lachrymose tear that I took the key out of my father's house in the year of 1751. <laughs> What a shame it was that he had dealt so long in Lonro and long bonds in Hong Kong and Japan, rather than giving his attention, as indeed he might well have done, to the Appen Stuarts and good Lord Charles. There it was. Good Lord Charles was Stanley's father. He was also a stockbroker. On your knees, farm boy. He's... And, and taste this rather, rather delicately prepared uh, ta ta ta. Which... I'm a Jacobite. I spent all my time in the city with my hair combed backwards like Edward Fox. Is that no reason not to be one? I said to David Brick. And forward he came, across the heather. The light was now going down, across the hills. And there I heard the sound of the redcoats getting closer, closer and closer. Oh, David, David, save me, he said. <laughs> and suddenly I realised that I'd moved from a novel by Robert Louis Stevenson into the world of David Steele and David Owen. Thank you. Thank you. That's... Yes. All right. Well... I find this impossible to mark, so um, I'll give them no points each for that one. Uh, now, the next game is called Film and Theatre Styles. We're going to start off with uh, Tony and Jonathan, and you're going to be improvising a little scene for us. But we'd like the studio audience to provide us with some film...
theatre styles that uh, you can be sort of chopped and changed. Sorry? The one-woman show. The one-woman show. <laughs> uh, great. Japanese no theatre. Japanese no theatre. Hang on, amateur dramatics. Haven't we had that before? But, uh, bedroom farce. Bedroom farce. Brechtian. Sorry? Brechtian. Brechtian. Oh, yeah, I like that. German expressionist. German expressionist. I think, I, I think we're quite enough now. I don't think we'll get through all those. Um, so, uh, oh, yeah, he's got to give you a scene, haven't I? So, Tony and Jonathan, can you pretend to be a loan shark and the debtor? Someone who owes money to the loan shark. Start off just without a style at all. Oh, shark, you got the tie for it. Yes, right. Yeah. Thanks very much. <laughs> On you go, on you go, right. whenever you like. You know. I understand your difficulty. I am the person to help. What is the problem? Why don't you trust me? Well, uh, it's just, uh, I, I, I used this voice last time as well. I, I, uh, I recognise you from last time. <laughs> yeah, you were right. in debt then as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, no theatre, Japanese no theatre. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. <coughs> no! <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> Yes, a bedroom farce. Bedroom farce. Look, for goodness sake, I'll give you some money, but you've got to hide in the toilet with the vicar because my mother in law's coming. Quick, 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 they're here. Hello. No, put them on, put them on. Look, take some money. Here it is. They'll good, absolutely. Hello, vicar. How are you? Nice to see you. <laughs> <coughs> Amateur dramaticals. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you want some money? I'll go and get some. <laughs> Gosh, this should. <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> this so prompt. What's my name? Uh, one, one more. Um, Gilbert and Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> I have no money to money, 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 spend. Money, 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 I have no money left to spend. Money, 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 Yes. Well, that's going to be very difficult to beat. I'm going to give 57 points each there. Very good indeed. So now it's Rory and John. Can you come forward, Go ready? On, John, we'll piss on them. <laughs> oh, but right. not now, after the show. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. Right. So I've got to hurry through because <laughs> Rory's going to do the epilogue later on. Now, um, some more theatre and film stars, if you can think. Punch and Judy, a great suggestion, you see. But now, one from this section here. Sorry? Woody Allen. I hope somebody's writing these down. <laughs> and one from this section over here. <laughs> the black and white minstrels. The black and white minstrels. Oh. One, for, one for the kiddies there. <laughs> now, all right, so let's start off. Somebody's written those down for me, I hope. And, um, yes, the idea of this is one of you has smashed into the car of the other one, and the other one is the chief constable. Mm. So whichever way around you want to do that. I'll be the bloke, you be the cop. I know way, man. Now you picking again, man, your, right? Is this your... Uh, this no, your man, done nothing, right? Also, I done nothing. Drive... I'm driving Excuse down me, the road. Excuse me, sir. Are you black by any chance? No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, Just in case. Uh, uh, <laughs> I tell you... I mean, look at that hair. <laughs> I just... <laughs> I take you. you've done the, take you've done the black and white minstrels there. <laughs> so, uh, a Punch and Judy. We've that was it. <laughs> Try it again. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your car, sir? What are you doing? I don't have any. I don't have any. It's not my car. It's not my car. It's my car. It's your car. It's your car. It's my car. It's not my car. Nothing at all. Do you think? Do you think children find this at all amusing? I don't. Let's do some Brechtian, which was suggested before. Brecht. The I car that has now arrived in the Caucasus has been broken. But let's go back to it in a moment. Let's go to the man coming over the hill, the old Chakaka man. Now, in this, I am the car. Obviously, I'm not actually the car itself, but I will adopt the pose of the broken and smashed car. Are you sad in the mountains? Sad with the weakness? Sad with the happiness of the people below you? I will be if you stay there. <laughs> uh, one, one more. Um, black and white minstrel show to end with. 
I can't stand men who put black makeup on and patronize our black friends. Token and meaningless, we go past the camera, <laughs> hoping that you will feel patronized. Okay, thank you. That's it. Yeah. Yes. Um. Yeah. Well, I think that's particularly good, but for technical reasons, I can only give them three points each. <laughs> now, this next game is called The World's Worst, and it's a quick fire round. They all take part and have to step forward as soon as they can think of the world's worst person to meet on a blind date. So if you'd like to come forward and stand on the world's worst step there, just as you think of them, this should be a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm, uh, I'm not um, picking my nose, it's just that I'm trying to kill this cockroach that crawled up there a few weeks ago. Hello, you must be Debbie. Do you want to go for an Indian? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello, you must be Charlie. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, I've been uh, giblet tossing for charity. <laughs> Hello, Peter. I'm Tony. Does it matter that you're expecting a woman? <laughs> oh, I just finished at the sewage farm, and I was wondering whether... <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you must be doing... Bloody hell, no one told me you had a face like a dog's bum. <laughs> I hope you don't mind this, but I, I brought my husband and the kids along. <laughs> Do you know the poetry of Rod McEwen? He goes... <laughs> hey. uh, I haven't thought of one, I just need the exercise. Uh, hello, my name's Tony. <laughs> I just want to say that I did lots, but they were all edited out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, well, that's it. <coughs> well, what a... What a bizarre thing to say in a live program. So let's go, let's go away for s let's go away for some advertisements now. Uh, see you after the break. Thank you very much. A great set of ads. Now, welcome back. I give ten points to everybody for that last uh, game, as I always do, let's face it. Um, now, this next game is called Props, and John and Jonathan, here's a prop for you, and you've got to come up with as many different ways of using that as possible in the, the time available. And uh, Rory and Tony, that's your one. It's a possum joke, isn't it? <laughs> one or both of these have been provided by the studio audience. It's just come out of their handbag or something. It's quite extraordinary. <laughs> So we buzz between the two, starting with John and Jonathan. There's many different ways you can use that, starting uh, now. It's 1912 in May, and we're going across the Atlantic. It'd be wonderful. I wonder if the ship's going to sink. Do you think it is? <laughs> and this is the latest in the John Paul Gautier Total Pratt range. <laughs> Sorry, not quite finished yet. Mm. No, 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 sell, sell, <laughs> sell. <laughs> sell. <laughs> yes, yes, what? Yes. <laughs> Jonathan and I are both those really freckly people from down under. We've got a fabulous new instrument which we've just discovered. It's called a Wingura Magura. And uh, we're going to be playing it for you right now. In fact, Jonathan is. <laughs> <coughs> uh, Mr. Slattery, um, I have to say that you, your wife, wife is, is doing fine, but I'm afraid your child is a piece of foam rubber. <laughs> I think I, uh, think I know I, I speak for... For John and, uh, and myself and for the rest of the crew, <laughs> we just want to thank you all so much. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thirteen-inch meat treat, deep pan. <laughs> 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 So, how long have you lived near Sellafield? Well, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. That's yes. All right. Uh, right. Well, I think uh, 16 and a half points to everybody for that last game. <laughs> now, the next round is called Different Games, because different games are played in the course of the round. Uh, Tony and John are going to play the first game, and it involves them uh, making up an advertisement on the spot. What they've got to do is advertise a product suggested by the studio audience, but in the style of the music that will be played in. I say they, they'll do it one by one. So Tony's going to go first. Can we have a, a sort of, uh, some sort of rugged pro product that Tony could advertise? Fish. Fish. <laughs> BMW. Medical, medical. Hang on, wait a minute. <laughs> so, do you work for an advertising agency? <laughs> no, I think uh, they're BMW, sort of that sort of car, sports car, fast car. Fast but, car. Tony, but to this, to the sound of this music. Have you ever wanted to own something which is an extension of your penis? <laughs> BMW is that kind of car. It's long, it's sleek, and there's so much inside. Many people can fit on it. If you think that this is the car for you, then just unzip your pants, lay back, and put your foot down on the accelerator. BMW, big memories, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Now, a nice light and, f light and fluffy one for, for John to advertise. Nice, light and fluffy product. Okay. Toupee. A toupee. Well, let's see if toupee works. Doesn't work for me, but there it is. Uh, <laughs> where you go, John? But to this you, music. Advertising music. a toupee to right. this music. <laughs> it's strange, isn't it, in Russia? Out there in the steps, all silence, all dark. Lenin didn't like the steps, but maybe he'd have liked them if he'd worn a toupee. <laughs> the bald head contains facts, ideas, machinery, futurism. But is it not better the fringe over the eyes than a fringe over the mind? Thank you. <coughs> well, that was very good. Yes. Oh. Yeah. And I think we better give uh, 39 points each there for the 39 steps. Now we're going to get uh, Rory and Jonathan. So Rory and Jonathan, you'd like to step forward and look at this monitor. Uh, oh. This is called film dubbing. God and uh, what they've got to do is to dub oh, on a soundtrack me. onto this film uh, from which the regular soundtrack okay. has been taken away. Yeah. What we'd like you to do, Rory and Jonathan, could you... Oh, sorry. Tommy's right. <laughs> You seem to be talking about something, I don't know. What have you got to improvise? Oh, I'm Clyde. <laughs> We're trying to concentrate. What on, for goodness sake? <laughs> what we'd like you to do is to improvise uh, somebody complaining in a hotel, to the hotel manager or something like that, but uh, dubbing it on to this sight track. What's the opposite of a soundtrack? Sight track. There you go. I've never been to this all in my life. Someone has poured some spaghetti over my helmet. <laughs> oh, well. I think I've heard it. It's mm. absolutely ridiculous. Oh, I, oh, no, no, I, 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 I can't see it. No, 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 I can't see anything wrong with that. But I ordered pizza. I definitely <laughs> ordered pizza. <laughs> it's not about it. This is spaghetti. I never thought it was my life. Oh, you ordered pizza in that establishment? Like... I've never thought it was in my life. <laughs> you... I, I have you know, I'm a well-known transvestite. <laughs> I'm going to phone and ring the Samaritans and complain. <laughs> oh, you'll be Give me that. Give me that. I won't. I won't. Oh, 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 you're squeezing my finger. Ah. Don't you dare squeeze my finger. Don't ever point your finger at me, you little Italian. Oh, how dare you. I shall order the pizza. No, I won't. Well, that's, this means war. <laughs> I've got a good mind. Oh, no, 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 please, don't talk when I'm talking. That's all I ask what? you. I, I'm going to send out for a pizza if you want one. Now, hmm? I'm still talking. You understand? Oh, I'm going straight back to the Wigmore Club. <laughs> you can stuff your spaghetti. Thank you. All right. <coughs> Jolly good. Well, that was very good. It must be worth 500 points each. So it's a shame only giving 32. <laughs> so this next game is called Remote Control. It involves everybody in this. Now, each of the contestants is provided with a TV program that they're going to improvise in the style of. Tony, uh, Star Trek. That's your TV program. Uh, Jonathan, Call My Bluff. <laughs> have you ever seen that? Maybe you've been on it for a while. Uh, Rory, Breakfast Television. I'm sure you must have been on that. And uh, John uh, Bilko. 
you know, Phil Silvers, Bill Coe. So you'd like to come forward ready to do that. And the idea of this is like I'm sitting at home with my remote control dodging around amongst the stations. But each of the programs that are on and each of the stations happens to be dealing with the same subject. And we like that subject suggested now by somebody in the studio audience. Pornography. Pornography. Um, yes, why not? Uh, well, we'll discover why not in a moment. Um, so I'm going to just, you know, dance around the... Well, not dance around, I'll just you know, go around from station to station, just as I feel like it, starting with Rory. Hello, well, I'm... Oh, oh sorry, wrong camera. <laughs> uh, well, I'm here because I'm standing in for... For Anne, who's having her baby this morning, good luck from all the team. We hope it's a human. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to talk about pornography in a bit, but just we, apparently Shepherd's Bush roundabout should be avoided uh, this morning. Um, talking of things to be avoided, of course, the Middle East. We'll be talking to the Ayatollah Khomeini John. later on. In the show. Uh, imagine Doberman sir, that little face looking up at the top of the hill. His whole body covered with oil as the great llama comes down on top of him, having any little sex with him for hour upon hour. Upon hour. <laughs> and then imagine all the women arriving, the women, the choir boys, and the great piles of molasses them rolling around. Them. <laughs> <laughs> sex, 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 sex is probably one of the armies. So, switch Tony. Space. And boobs. <laughs> Lots of them. These are the voyages of my hands. Ha ha! Ha ha! Lieutenant Uhura, would you like to gasp at my veiny bang stick? Jo Jonathan. Jo um, Jonathan. Now we come. We come to the next. Uh, <laughs> the next part on the. Um, and it's pornography. Who's going to start off on that? And I think it's Frank. <laughs> um. um, um, <laughs> um, um <laughs> Now, poor pornog, poor, 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 John. I don't understand it, Bilko. I came down to the hut earlier on. No, don't understand it, Colonel. You don't understand what's going on here. The men are needing sex, sex, sex. They're making love to each other. Making... Uh, Rory. I don't understand it, Bilko. Rory. And funny man Charlie Drake. Oh, sorry, I had to wrong. <laughs> yes, well, uh, and now, Lizzie. Hello. Jonathan. <laughs> Pornography, pornography, pornography. Cunt. Rory, Rory. I got a message from my buttocks this morning. <laughs> Did you? Tony. Oh, um, <clears throat> what's, uh, what's the latest, Mr. Spock? Well, Captain, my horny manliness is beginning to stir. I... John. It's that ridiculous, size. We're coming down the close. We're going around the corner, and all these women are lying on the floor, waiting for it, not waiting for it, begging for it. Mm. Yeah, let's go there. Come on, grab it, grab it. Thank you very much. That'll it. Thank you. <coughs> well, well, that was brilliant. That was absolutely fantastic. Uh, three points each. Well, that about ends the show, so all I have to do is to total up the points and see who's won. And I see that uh, Rory McGrath has won this week, so well done, Rory. Oh. <laughs> and, and the... The... The prize for winning is to read the credits out in the style of my choosing, and I'd like Rory to read out the credits in the style of his own mother. Uh, so all I have to do now is to... Thank you all. Stay there, Roy, for just a moment. Uh, thank you, Tony Slattery, Jonathan Price, Roy McGrath, John Sessions, you, the studio audience. So this is me, Clive Anderson, saying good night. Good night. Well, Roy, you've, you've done better things in your time. Now, that Clive Anderson's very good, and John Sessions is very good, but you've done much better than that today. Oh, Phil Pope did the music. Oh, did I meet him at your wedding? I think I did, yes. Because all these people do that programme, it's such a silly little programme, and all these, what's a floor manager for God's sake? How much does she get? Oh, I wish I was Stephen would do something like that, you know, or could be great. Oh, makeup design, I met her, didn't I? Oh, now, how's that girl? Oh, no, Alana Buckley, she Irish. Oh, yeah, I wish I, we could find a nice little Irish girl for, you know, for Michael, yes, that would be lovely. Oh, Michael Lingard, yes, I met him. He's, oh, look at that poor little girl. What does a director do? Oh, now, what's the difference between a director and a producer? <laughs>